Well, making an early start this morning is the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, who joins us now to talk about a new £700 million plan to catch pupils up on all of that lost learning over the last year. Good morning to you, Education Secretary. Good morning, Julia. Thank you ever so much for having us on. Well, thanks very much for talking to us. Well, let's talk about £700 million. This is going to help uh, both uh, children leaving in year six, uh, uh, leaving primary school and children in secondary school to get face to face summer school lessons. But I suppose the first question is, is it enough money? Well, this is building on the one billion pounds that we announced just uh, just over six months ago, and it's a uh, two hundred million pounds targeted at secondary schools to help them lay on uh, summer schools and other types of activity. Uh, but also, there's a uh, uh, targeted. Uh, uh, money in part of our national tutoring program, £300 million uh, recovery fund. That means that every uh, secondary schools on average will be getting an extra £22,000 per school, primary schools an extra £6,000 per school. So uh, real substantial amounts of money going to schools, helping them do targeted support. But this is all just part of our uh, larger plan to give children that extra boost, give them that extra help. But the best help that we can give them is getting them back into the classroom. And I, oh, I think yes. we'll probably both agree on that. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I cried with joy at the thought of my daughter getting back into school, I have to say. I mean, £22,000 sounds like a lot of money. You've got a secondary school with a 1,000 pupils. Work that out. It's not very much money at all. What's that actually going to pay for? Because that is really not going to cover much of a teacher's salary over the summer teaching kids. What are they doing, an hour per kid? Well, what we're asking schools to do is target children who have the greatest need, uh, children that need an extra help. So many children uh, all the way through the pandemic will have done incredibly well through online learning and will sort of zoom back into school and there won't be a challenge at all. But there'll be some children who'll be just needing that little bit of extra assistance. That's why it's not just the uh, as part of that £700 million extra building on the billion pounds we promised and delivered before, um, is, is actually an element of what's called the National Tutoring Programme. This is really targeted to support of small group tuition because all the evidence shows that children who have suffered lost learning by having small group tuition just for two hours extra a week over a 12 week period can catch up on three to five months worth of, uh, sort of lost learning. So really important step forward. And is it going to be compulsory for the children who are judged by the school to need it or not? Because one of the biggest issues we know, children do better in school if their parents are fully engaged with it. And we know the kids who will have lost out the most during this time with uh, Zoom lessons, even if their school has done them, is the ones who've got parents who are disengaged from their education. So if a kid's lost out on that front all of the last year and the parents are shrugging their shoulders about summer school, aren't those going to be the very children who need the most help, who are least likely to go to the summer schools? Well, we we can't compel children to come to summer schools um, as you know it's a it's not in our power to do so but what we really want to do is work with parents work with pupils actually show that there's a real benefit for those children and actually there'll be some good fun as well and this is alongside our holiday activity and food program that we're running uh, right across the country making sure that children from the most disadvantaged backgrounds are, are not just uh, being fed but also having some fun as part of it and I, I think there is an element of, yes, we want children to be doing catch up in terms of uh, schoolwork and academic work, but it's also good to have uh, certain elements of fun as well, because oh. it certainly attracts children to come on in. Good Lord, our children need to have some fun again. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think um, we all do, Julia, well, don't we? Don't we all? Well, well, when is that going to happen? Because the Prime Minister was saying how we're not going to be run by dates, we're going to be run by data. And we're going to, these are the earliest possible dates for all the different stages we've seen of coming out of lockdown. And then yesterday it was hinted at, actually, if we're going by the data, we may well be out sooner. Well, which is it? It's what the Prime Minister said, Julia. It's what, Which uh, time? you know, the, uh, it's the, uh, as he set out as part of a roadmap, uh, these are the earlier states that will be exiting out of. Uh, out of lockdown. I think we're all looking forward to the 21st of uh, June, uh, but there's a lot of work to be done. We have to take a cautious and careful approach, but so many people have asked for clarity as to what the route out of this is. The Prime Minister has set out that very clearly and explicitly, and that's the route that we're going to be following. But those dates won't be coming earlier. Uh, we'll be sticking to that timetable, but making sure 
this country gets out of uh, out of lockdown and onto the best possible footing to really succeed into the future. Well, the first stage, of course, is children going back to school on March 8th. Now, a number of head teachers and their unions have said, look, we just don't think it's possible to get all children back in the classroom, particularly with the 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 uh, testing uh, regime, rapid flow testing. Um, my school has already asked permission for my daughter to be uh, tested. And I've said no, because uh, she's a healthy child. She has no symptoms. She's had COVID a year ago. Um, if she comes into contact with someone who um, has COVID, uh, then they would make sense for her to be tested. But the mass testing of healthy children is, we, we know, I mean, it's been ruled already by the regulatory authorities, is, is, is unethical. It's also unnecessary. So why are we making things harder for schools by insisting on mass testing? Well, by having a mass testing regime in our schools, welcoming children back, but making sure they're tested on their return, is making sure that we uh, keep schools as COVID secure as possible, keep COVID out of the schools. Uh, this is for the safety of the children, for uh, The children are already safe. We, we already know um, the schools are safe for children. Um, and uh, but going that extra step, making sure that we root out COVID as much as we can do, actually minimises lost learning for other children who would then maybe have to self-isolate if they'd come into contact with one of their friends uh, who had COVID. So it's really about trying to do everything we can do to ensure that COVID doesn't spread. And it was a key and important part of the element of actually uh, bringing schools back at this early stage. And we've, you know, for me, Having children back into the classroom, whether at primary school or secondary school or in our colleges, is just so important. Well, and yes, you I, never wanted them to be out of school. You would have rather they were in school all this time, I mean, as they have been in France. Uh, well, I, I'm always a great advocate that we should always keep uh, children in the classroom because there's such great benefit for them to be in the classroom. And why do they and, need uh, to wear masks in the classroom? Because the Prime Minister has said previously, not only are masks not needed, they're needed not to be worn, but so children can actually learn properly. Teachers can see their faces. They can uh, they can see the teacher's face, obviously, and that, and that everybody can learn. We know that the risk to children is so tiny. If you are convinced that this mass rollout of rapid flow tests um, designed by the way for people with symptoms not um, healthy children um, if you're convinced that that is going to keep COVID out of the classroom why do children need to wear masks and have tests surely it'd be one or the other well, we always, at every stage, follow the best public health advice. And Public Health uh, England's advice is that uh, wearing a face mask for secondary schools would have a, a benefit in terms of reducing the chances of transmission uh, of COVID. So at every stage, we've always assured parents that we follow the best scientific, the best health and medical advice. And that's what we're doing. What's we're changed always since August, to Public then? Health England. What's so, changed sorry, since Julie. last August? The Prime Minister, apologies for interrupting, I know time is short, you've got another interview to get to after seven. But, uh, the Prime Minister said last August that masks were not necessary in the classroom. Masks haven't been necessary all last autumn. They weren't necessary at the beginning of January when kids were supposed to go back. What new advice is there? What new evidence is there that masks are necessary? Because I've not seen any. Well, the, the advice came from Public Health England. And what, what, sort of and what new up. evidence have they used? Could, are you going to publish um, that evidence? Uh, well, we've already published uh, a whole set of evidence about the importance of safety and health measures within schools as part of our guidance, and that went out on Monday. Was in terms of a face mask, this is something that we were asked to do and introduce by Public Health England. On what basis? Uh, we're keeping it. Uh, oops, uh, we're keeping it under review. It's going to be reviewed at Easter as to this is as to whether this is something that should be continued or not. And uh, it's right to keep it under review because like you, I'd like schools to feel as normal as possible. I'd like schools to feel uh, like the types of places that we all like to and want to see schools being, and we're so used to seeing them as being. Uh, but that's why we're keeping it under review and Easter, we'll look at it again and see if it's necessary in the new term. OK, well, I mean, we all know it's not necessary. It's a sop to the teaching unions, isn't it? Uh, and to anxious parents uh, telling them once again that schools are dangerous when they're not. But, oh, well, I, I keep losing these battles. Um, Education Secretary Gavin Williamson, very much appreciate you joining us this morning.